Hello and thanks for joining me. The topic today, alcohol and drinking. Now I'd like to start by asking a simple question. As a society and also as individuals, is it possible we're underestimating the negative effects of drinking alcohol on our health? And at the same time, perhaps overemphasizing its positive effects? I ask because I believe among those of us who value our health and are taking lots of steps to make sure we're doing all we can to become healthier and age well, there's a large percentage that believe moderate drinking enhances our health and may even lower our risk of certain diseases and of premature death. Do you believe that's true? Well, let's see if what I share with you today helps us answer that question together. And we could start by agreeing that for the most part, very few people who drink are doing so because they already feel great, right? They're usually doing it because they need to unwind or relax. It's a social environment. Basically, it's helping them to move from a place where they're tired or tense or stressed to a place where they're more relaxed and can unwind. In terms of alcohol's effect on our brain, we know it hits certain feel-good pleasure centers through certain pathways, the GABA and dopamine pathways, for example. And it's through these feel-good pathways that we temporarily feel good while drinking. And of course, on the flip side, it impacts other parts of the brain, such as the hypothalamus and cerebral cortex and cerebellum. This impact results in many things, including our penchant for sometimes making some really bad decisions when we're drinking. From a pure health perspective, I could talk about the fact that alcohol and alcoholic drinks are largely empty calories. That is, they don't provide any nutrients that we'd consider to be important for our health. And unfortunately, these empty calories are primarily sugar calories. And one thing I've noticed is that someone who drinks regularly will often eat less. Their appetite can sometimes be displaced from the drinking, similar to the effect that smoking cigarettes can sometimes have. That's a double whammy in a not good way because more sugar calories are a recipe for disaster as we age. And when that's combined with fewer calories from protein-rich foods is one example, we end up giving our mind and body a lot more of the stuff that accelerates aging and increases our risk of disease while also depriving it of the nutrients it desperately needs to be healthy and age well. And then, of course, there's the added insult of an increase in chronic inflammation and vis visceral fat deposits that manifest as what we commonly refer to as a beer belly. That visceral fat, as I discuss in my book, dramatically increases our risk of virtually every kind of chronic disease you can think of. Trust me, the effects on our health from that big beer belly are much worse than you might think. So none of what I've mentioned to this point, other than the temporary feel good, is at all good for our health, especially as we age. Which brings me to the main point I really wanna share, and please know up front, I don't like to be the bearer of bad news, but, but the fact remains. Alcohol, more specifically the ethanol molecule, in very simple terms, is toxic to the human body and is treated as such when we consume it as it's diverted to the liver to be processed as a poisonous substance. And once the liver is busy detoxifying this poison, many of the liver's other responsibilities, such as cholesterol production and reuptake, triglyceride synthesis, and so many other things, all of those responsibilities get suppressed. So what can result is, in a, is a chronic rise in those triglycerides, which is, as you may remember, the storage form of fat. And of course, an increase in sugar and then insulin, which you also know has important and hugely negative impacts on our health. Over time, moderate to excessive alcohol consumption can lead to damage of the tissues of the liver and result 
in an increase in inflammation and scarring, which then leads to what we know as cirrhosis of the liver. And it doesn't stop there, my friend. The most up-to-date research demonstrates that moderate to excessive drinking can damage the gut-brain axis, disturbing the balance of our gut microbiome and cause leaky gut syndrome. It disturbs hormone balance, specifically estrogen and testosterone. It can lead to increased risk for depression and anxiety and headaches, and can also lead to permanent neurodegeneration, disturbed DNA methylation, something I briefly discuss in chapter two of my book, and an increased risk of many or most cancers. Ironically, many people who have a drink in the evening thinking it's gonna help them sleep, actually what happens is, while they may feel more relaxed at first, the quality of that sleep ends up being worse in, in many cases. And over time, that alone uh, can have a profoundly negative effect on our health. The truth is alcohol has a negative effect on virtually every part of our body and if abused or used chronically is the surest way to ruin your health. Listen, I'm like most people, or at least many people. I have an occasional glass of wine or a beer, usually in a social setting, and, and I always enjoy it when, when I do, but I know I can't do it regularly. So when I say occasional, I'm talking about maybe one drink a week or every 10 days. Sometimes I'll go a number of weeks without a drink, and, and when I do, I certainly don't miss it. Now, if you're thinking, Al, what about the French paradox or the health benefits of resveratrol that I've read about, you know, that compound in red wine that's been purported to have health benefits and may even extend our lifespan? Well, the research really shows that the positive effects on our health have really been overstated. I mean, to say it another way, you'd have to arguably drink a gallon of red wine a day to get the benefits, at which point the negatives would, would obviously outweigh the positives. So no, I'm not a believer. So in the end, what am I saying, really? Listen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if your goal is to take control of your health and your life and improve your odds of dying healthy, you'd be really smart to look at drinking alcohol as a once every so often kind of thing. Yeah, used sparingly and provided you're not going to be driving, of course, having an occasional drink can certainly be part of a healthy lifestyle. I mean, to a large degree, it really is about dose and frequency. Throughout my book, Age Well and Feel Great, I talk about striking the balance between enjoying our life and also doing the smart thing to enhance our health, both short and long term. It's not about perfection and it never will be. It's about striking that right balance and being smart. Of course, that being said, you're not gonna hear me make an argument that any amount of alcohol consumption is good for you because in good conscience, I simply can't do that. To summarize, or I should say wrap this up, if you'd like to learn more about alcohol and its effect on your health and your brain and body and so forth, check out Dr. Andrew Huberman's podcast number 86. Once you listen in and process the information he shares, it'll be very hard to go back and unhear what you learned. Hope that helps.